Hey guys, welcome to the Superhero Cut Show, where we talk all things Marvel, DC, and Star Wars. It's your boy, Stevie Hayes. Please like, subscribe, and ring the notification bell so you know when we post. So today, I'm here to talk to you guys about the Ahsoka Show, Episode 7. This is not a breakdown. I'm going to be dropping the breakdown on Thursday, which is tomorrow. Today, I just wanted to give uh, just my reaction to this episode and just tell you some things that, you know, that I liked, some things I didn't like, and how I felt. Um, and mind you, this is no, this is no notes. This is straight off, off of the dome. This is my instant reaction of the Ahsoka show. So, all in all, this is definitely probably uh, the least, my my least favorite episode out of out of all of them. Not saying that the episode is bad, but I was just expecting a lot more. And this episode didn't really move the narrative at all for the story. Um, the story feels like it's it's like stood still. If that makes sense, um, but. I do with the ball some things that that I did like and some things that I got right. So, an Insider was dropping leaks literally months ago, uh, talking about the fact that Ezra was not going to be a lightsaber, but that he was going to have this force slash karate deal going on. I dropped that leak months ago, and I got Rosa for it. Well, that leak was true, and we see in Ahsoka episode seven uh, that, that that just came out that Ezra does have that. Um, and that also is connected to, to, to something that I didn't like in this episode. Um, Sabine gave Ezra the opportunity to wield his lightsaber again. And he did not do it. I don't understand why that did not happen. That kind of killed my vibe. And I get that he's most likely going to wield it again in episode eight. But still, it's like this is a perfect way to get characters, you know, back up to, to you know, to get fans to, you know, be back into the whole Ezra Bridger thing. And you don't let him wield the lightsaber. That kind of blew me a little bit. I was a little like, bro, like that, like, and the wild thing is that like his power level wasn't that strong. Like he's doing the force pushes in the Kung Fu moves, but it wasn't like his for like, like, it's not like the force was like really strong with him and that he was like overpowering people, you know, it was kind of mid. So that kind of blew me a lot. Um, I did. One of the things that I did like is. I really liked when Ahsoka called out to Sabine and Sabine sensed her. I thought that was pretty awesome. Um, I loved that the intro when Hera is going at it with the senator dude. That, that was dope. And then the you know the show kind of goes into Ahsoka flying onto Peridia again to all the ship battles. I thought I thought all that was super awesome. But as I said, you know, I mean, and then on top of that, right? One of the main things that I wanted to figure out is like what the hell is Balin trying to do, right? And we see that Balin, Balin lets uh, Shin kind of go on her own to go and, you know, capture Ezra and Zabini. He was like, you know, you go and be like, you know, high ranking in the order. I have another, you know, task that I need to accomplish. And I thought that we were going to see what Balin does. But obviously Balin doesn't do anything. He just sits back, waits for Ahsoka, and then they fight for a little bit. And then that's it. I mean, <laughs> you know, this like... like when you drop a fire episode like the last one, you know, fans are kind of expecting a lot of the needle to be moved. It definitely when it is the episode before the last one for the season. You know, this to me felt like a filler episode. You know, it was just a bunch of action, which I don't have anything against. I love action, but like at least let it like move the story along. And to me, it felt like the story wasn't really moved um, in this. No, it didn't feel like the story was not moved like literally at all in this episode. So, yeah, I was, I was very disappointed in like the execution of it. And all that jazz. Um, but some of the good takeaways, I guess we we could take away is that you know, Ezra Sabine and Ahsoka are reunited uh together, which is also you no, know, we got to see the clones in action. Uh, that is another thing that I do want to talk about. The fight choreography was kind of weird. Um, you know, Star Wars theory also, but we need Nick back, we need Nick back, you know. I mean, and did this I'll say I, in this Ahsoka show, you know, I have I wasn't really expecting the best fight choreography in general, but I was expecting better, you know. So going forward in Star Wars, you know, I really and, and you know, this is really Dave's like first, you know, show that he's taken on. And I do believe that <clears throat> the more comfortable Dave gets, the better the fighting will get too. So, I mean, I'm not really tripping about it, but, you know, there it isn't as great as it should be, you know. So, but yeah, I mean, I mean, the, the show, I mean, the episode was good. I will rank it like a seven or eight out of ten. Uh, I, and that's pretty high because, uh, as I said, it wasn't bad content. You know, it's it's not like it was all terrible. It's just that with the big setup of episode six, 
to go into episode seven and it be kind of a filler episode, it kind of blows. So, I mean, I am excited for episode eight. And as I said, I, I'm going to rewatch it again before I do this breakdown and really dig deep into it. But, you know, all for the first reaction, like it's not this literally probably the worst episode. And like when I say worse, like it's not bad. It's just like all the other episodes are so good that this is like, you know, in that lower tier for me. So that's why I thought about it. Tell me what you guys think, man. Please like subscribe and ring the notification bell. Have a wonderful day and peace out.